Why, hello there, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, Paul Tranny here. Awesome. Marsha, you and I are both in our happy place. Good to have you here. Paul Tranny, good to dive into Photoshop Masterclass. Uh, you know, again, it's all about color, going from monochromatic to electric. But don't think that that's, uh, it's going from good to better, or just like okay to better. Because uh, a lot of these color choices can like make or break a design. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully you could hear me okay, get a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic, and uh, wherever you may be, I'll keep an eye on all the chats, but uh, I'm over at behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. So, hello there. Cool. All right, let's get this party started. Got some bright lights here, I'm going to adjust accordingly. Uh, so let's dive into this. Got a full day, big thank you to Terry, and of course, hey, Suze. You got a fun lineup today, I would say, wouldn't ya? Uh, so let's switch screens um, and uh, dive into this, shall we? All right, Adrian, Michelle, awesome. So I kind of just kind of cut out some things because again, we're just gonna have some some fun with uh, with lighting is what we're gonna do. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the idea. Okay, so here it is. I just took this what Lacoon and his and his children. Uh, which is what this uh, statue is at the, I'm pretty sure the Vatican. Um, and it's a lot about like human agony and you got this real, you got a snake here. It's all intense. But I like, uh, I like kind of like breaking things up and chopping them up and, and doing stuff like this, which is kind of fun. So this is what we will, uh, we'll colorize. Um, so yeah, and uh, currently just what's what's set up for this background is just like a neutral gray. A lot of times I'll actually will jump in and throw a gradient back there. If you know me, I do that plenty. But even as we go through some of these choices, we can see that this will drastically like, you know, obviously change the look of this whole piece based on, of course, the background, right? So you here you get more of a sort of a sunrise feel. Uh, we can go to more earth tones. And then we have uh, just some fun pastels and it changes the entire look of the whole thing, uh, as you can see. Because here we are, what, Lacuna and his agony, right? But it's on a bright sunny background, right? So again, uh, we don't want to pick colors just to pick colors. We want to do it with purpose. Happy Friday to Andrew! Awesome! What's up, Ryan? It's good to have everybody here. Can I just welcome you all and give you a virtual hug? A virtual hug, okay? Just virtual. Everything's all virtual these days. But we could have fun with this. Uh, I also have this piece uh, that I was working on like this morning as well. Like it still needs some work, but when you start dealing with a clash of uh, colors, so you kind of see the differences between these two pieces. One is kind of more black and white. One is, you know, currently has more color with it. And how do you, you know, tie that all together? So that's the idea. We'll start with this one because this one will be really fun. Um, and this other one will just, it's, since it's a little more finished, this one will be a little easier. So um, at least I hope, huh? So let's uh, jump into this. First off, I do think that's an awesome background color, right? Uh, but let's say for instance, we wanna create a couple different looks because I was also thinking that for, you know, a lot of these, a lot of constellations are, are, are based off of, uh, you know, Greek, actually, are they Greek or Roman gods? So I thought the idea of putting them even uh, in the sky. So again, just turning on and having, instead of just a solid color, having a background like so, right? So this is what we have. So we can kind of play with this as well. We can already see that this is too bright. So let's do some overall color adjustments. Shall we, Amir, if that's okay with Amir and Katri. All right, uh, so that's what I want to do. Uh, cool thing is, so so first off, right in here, if I did want to do some touch-ups, and just so you guys know how some of this is put together, a lot of this is just like, I just call him Guy over here, but I have this folder for this this guy right here. We can kind of move him around. There's his leg. His leg's down there. Don't you hate it when that happens? Right, and then we can see in here, we have these individual elements. So right here, what I'll do a lot of times to navigate is I'll hold down the Command key, and that will enable me to auto select, say that piece and this piece. And what is that piece? And I'm jumping to, if you watch my layers panel, I'll jump to that particular layer. Uh, so that's kind of typically how I'll navigate around. If I do want to know, say where this specific stone is, all I need to do is hold down the option key and click and I can zoom to it, right? And I can see what's on top of it. Kind of needs some work. 
I'll hit B for brush. I'll jump in. I don't even know what brush I was using. Maybe the chunky charcoal, right? Because I want to kind of make this look like it's broken up a little bit more. This line is too clean. Ooh, geez. But we also know that we need to make sure we're on uh, that layer. So that's all I'm doing. This is kind of like, let's, let's just add a little bit of variation right in there, like so. Okay. So that's all I'm doing for this portion. We can clean this up as well. I could actually use the same, let's just do this really fast. Use the same brush, um, potentially, or just in general, these brushes. I'm using Kyle's bonus chunky charcoal. Uh, I could use that to create other little like, um, uh, parts of rock that are breaking off because as I click that's what we get so we get just that kind of breaking and that's what I need I just need like a little bit more chaos in here for some of these and again all I'm doing is kind of showing you um, uh, essentially kind of how I put this together just as a starter uh, fill the gap with flowers <laughs> yeah you know I'd love to uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I fill the, some of these gaps. What we're going to have is I was thinking we could do these different light sources, right? So the goal is to take one piece and do as many different looks to it as possible. And then you could decide your favorite. Whichever one you like, I'll go ahead and, of course, post. Uh, oh, no, hopefully Photoshop didn't delete all your brushes. I'm so sorry. Uh, that shouldn't, I don't know how Photoshop deletes your brushes, like that shouldn't be the case. If you ever update Photoshop, know that you do have your preferences folder, right? So you could always jump in here and say, okay, uh, whatever version of Photoshop, we have our presets right in here. Um, so just kind of be mindful of that. You, you technically probably have them somewhere, uh, unless they really did get deleted somehow, which is, uh, I feel for you. That's the worst. And it does take, take a while to uh, set up everything as well, uh, I think. All right, so here we go. So as I do this really fast, uh, since I'm gonna work on lighting, what if I wanna add some dark spots or some light spots? What I'll usually do is I will have this as like darker. So uh, hue, let's just go, let's just make this darker, right? All of these are like darker elements of that rock, right? And then what we can do is we could go ahead and lock the transparency. Click right there. I'm locking that transparency. Now when I paint, I can actually only paint on uh, where there are already pixels. So now as I click, it's actually just adding like highlights to that layer. And that gives me like a little bit more depth rather than just painting everything all one color, okay? Uh, so yeah, Sig, just keep your brushes like I I keep I keep my stuff off to the side. <laughs> like it's actually on my other laptop is where I have like most of my uh, most of my brushes and settings and things like that. So that's what we'll do. We can throw some fun bursts in here. You get the idea. But uh, let's go beyond this, shall we? Don't forget to unlock this because I'll, sometimes I'll actually screw up and realize I did not have it locked. All right, there we go. All right, cool. Let's move on. Uh, cool. We all need a little chaos in our life. Okay, so I have uh, this guy. I have this little kid, again, holding down the command key, and I can click and locate uh, that layer group or that layer. It's totally up to me. Have that one, and then they have this one over here, right? So that's what I have, everything is looking good. They all need to be darker to just have it lock in and, and look more like the background. So I'm gonna add an adjustment layer right over here. Save your file, Carol. Uh, cool. Good to have everyone here. Hello, Muriel and Cassie and Shimoli. Uh, but this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make everything darker so if it's gonna be lighter or darker, we wanna actually look at this top, uh, second from the very top. These are probably the most drastic changes you can make to layers. And this deals with just brightness, contrast, right? And then you get into color. So we wanna go right in here. 
Uh, I could do this a couple different ways. I could go into levels, right? We know about levels. This is a master class, so I'm less apt to, uh, you know, kind of focus on the basics because I can just kind of increase or decrease this brightness, right? But what I want to do is I actually am going to use curves. So for all those sculptures, go right in here. We're going to select curves, right? As we select curves, we can see right up here, I want to apply these curves to everything, right? So that's when I just add a clipping mask right down here, hold down the option key, click, and now it's only going to change the sculptures and not everything. How's everybody doing today? How are you doing, guys? Huh? Tell me, is everybody having a good day, huh? It's Friday. I thought it was like, I don't know how it's Friday. I, I, what happened to Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? They like disappeared and now it's, we're already at Friday. So I've had like a super weird week. I had like no idea what day it is for the most part. Right, okay, so we can see, look at all these. Um, we have the lights, we have the darks. We of course grab the brights, right, make them brighter. We know what that's gonna do. We can grab the darks and clip them but really we want some lovely, uh, more variation in the brightness. So I'll just click and drag that down, like so. Drag it down, drag it down. Oh yeah, let's drag these mid-tones down. Oh yeah, gorgeous. I'm already loving this. I already like this. This looks really cool. Thank you, Mia. Um, especially with this, and all we did is we just adjusted the curves. It was actually pretty straightforward. We made everything uh, darker, right? Yes, Sig, the week just flew by. Like when it was Wednesday, I'm like, how's it already Wednesday? It's just, it was just so bizarre. All right. Uh, all right. So I was just flexing. <laughs> That's the first exercise I've done all day today. Okay, so we could treat this a couple different ways. If we want to make it look like these guys are in like the stars, we can start to play with some tones now, okay? So we can start to, start to play with color. So that's when this next section comes into play, right in here. We could amp up any of these. I'm actually gonna go to photo filter and I'm gonna try this because I know I'm thinking, oh, I'd like to shift it to be more uh, blue or cooler. So again, what it automatically did is it added this warming filter so as if it, you have a photo filter over your lens. So, um, and looks like Thursday is Friday evening. <laughs> Thursday is Friday Eve and it's Saturday for some people. What's it like living in the future? So right up here, I'll take this from a warming to like a cooling filter, right? So try this cooling filter, say 80, but let's not forget to clip it. Like that. And now you can see, kind of makes it look like it's kind of more in the sky, potentially, uh, in this situation for this stuff. Let's try to select them one more time. You know, there they are. We should add a light source in here, which would be awesome. Can we do that, please? Sean, will you let me add a light source? And how would we do that? All right. First thing I'm actually gonna do before I even uh, get into that part is I need to actually kind of cut them out because they need to be behind these mountains. So we'll go down to that layer real fast. Here's that particular layer right here. First thing that I usually, I usually do is, yeah, I'll duplicate that layer. And then I'll, I'll typically go to the properties panel and I'll say, hey, you know what? Just remove the background. That's where I typically start. Remove the background. That's the easiest thing I can do. See, there we go. Uh, to kind of get me started, because again, that's like just a click away, right? New Zealand is in the future. Steve's in the future, aren't you? Quick select, ba ba. Rolling on through. Just grabbing these other parts. I don't need everything, but I do need this stuff. So 
So let's just grab some of this. Not this part, silly. Not that part, silly. I'm not gonna be too exact with this because I uh, honestly just don't need to be. Let's turn that off. Let's go back in here. Let's continue to select. Does anybody else do things this way? Like I use the uh, quick selection tool like a lot. Now, of course, depends on your scenario, but I, I like it because in the name, it's like, hey, you know what? I'm pretty fast and I think it is pretty fast, but then it quickly gets derailed like this, right? So I kind of chop this up. Again, I'm not gonna go too crazy because again, it's just parts of the feet that I need to worry about. Let's fill that with the foreground color, white. There we are, kind of cut that out and we can play with that some more. You get the idea. Move this to the top for you pros since this is a master class and if you end up with a ton of layers, let's actually see how many layers I have and let's just, let's just hit this button. There we go, oh my, floating head. Uh, layer count. Oh, that's actually not bad at all. I have 44 layers, but I don't wanna have to scroll up 44 layers. Just select this. You could use the command key and then the um, closing bracket. Baba. If you hold down the shift key, it's gonna move it right to the top of that layer group and then do that once more and it's clear at the very top of everything. See how this layer is all of a sudden at the top? If I wanna put it on the bottom, shift command opening curly bracket, it's gonna put it right at the bottom, ready? Bam, bam, there it is. So from the top to the bottom, I don't know. That's what I wanted to do. All right. Yeah, did you guys, uh, did you like T Tony Harmer? Did you see his live uh, stream, Sean? I kind of, uh, I missed it, I'm not gonna lie. All right. <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. All right, here that is, here's this. We can move that around, let's do some rotation. Oh, this little rock is not where it's supposed to be. Again, just do a command click, you can locate that layer and move it into place. That's all I'm doing. I wanna know if you guys like have any questions about any of this, right? I just, I don't know if you do. Uh, but yeah, let's move this. Uh, actually, this is probably fine at this point. Let's get into a light source, shall we? We shall. All right. Uh, first, let's introduce, let's actually introduce a ton of planets because this is kind of like constellation-y and cool. It's what I'm hoping for, right? Let's introduce the planets. Oh, here they are, magically, boom. Uh, I don't know if you guys are like me, but y you know, I, I use a lot of the same elements because they're already cut out for me. So in my CC library, you can see, oh, I have, I should re rename this planets but I kind of keep everything cut out and squared away in here. So if I ended up wanted to add a space guy, I can do that. Especially in nature, when you saw that previous version, this was pretty easy to throw together because I already have everything cut out. So think about if you're gonna be cutting something out, you think of reusing it, drop it in your CC library so you can, right? So that's all I'm doing at this point. Uh, that's how I got these planets. They're looking good, kind of. Right, let's throw that away. We have the sun back here. This big red fiery ball. Let's make this the source of light. So let's reset our brush because we are painting rocks earlier. Let's just do a soft round and uh, let's get into some of this action. Eye for eyedropper to select this gorgeous, there we go. That might be all we need right there. Right, we can get a little more crazy if we prefer to, but it's something maybe that we like build up to, right? Personally, I would probably add some white in there. All right, so I have two layers, right? Here's one and uh, here's just the other one. Is that nice glow. Uh, but I could always take this 
I can have it here, I can duplicate it, but I can change this one to uh, change the blend mode, right? So a lot of times I will make that background pop a little more by setting it to something like overlay, okay? So uh, let me make this even larger so everybody can see it. Look at that, look at how gorgeous that is. That's looking better. Right, so this is what it would look like before. So this is what takes you from like, okay at Photoshop to really good at Photoshop is uh, of course playing with these blend modes, right? So, so we go overlay back to the way it was initially. I mean, look at the difference there, right? So that's why I'll typically layer a couple of them on. This initial one is not set to overlay, right? But this one is. So that's all I'm doing, guys. Let's have some fun painting, huh? Shall we paint? Ah, uh, so you could use exactly, Steve. You, yeah, you got it right. Uh, yes, uh, libraries auto save to the cloud. By the way, uh, speaking of uh, libraries, you can open up your Creative Cloud desktop app, and uh, rather than having like this view of your uh, nature images in this case. It's like, oh, I gotta like, I don't know. Is there an easier way to see all this content? Like, what the heck is this? I don't know, right? You can open up your CC desktop app uh, and sure enough, go to that particular folder. And this is just an easier way uh, to view things. I'm gonna view by group because that's how I have everything set up. But now I can go to insects, flowers, and branches. And this is my favorite part right over here. Zoop. Oh, I get to actually um, control the size. So now I can see everything just like much larger, which is just like easier to work with. Okay. And so if you are ever, you get into organizing your stuff, use your Creative Cloud desktop app because it's going to be easier. Cool. Cool. Paint with light, right? And again, we are going from like monochromatic look to something, uh, to something amazing is what we're looking for, right? I do really love this, and it sounds like most people do. This curves is like awesome, right? It is cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. But what I wanna do, no skulls yet, no. Come on, I got more than just one trick on my sleeve. Um, I want to actually kind of paint uh, like uh, the sunlight hitting these statues like on the shoulder and everything. So I could switch B to brush, right? And I can start painting on here and I can start increasing the flow. I can do that and paint that like so, right? Of course I'm outside the lines until I make this a clipping mask saying, hey, just affect the statues, right? Or these sculptures as they're called. Bam, there they are, right? So we can jump in and add those highlights if we want to, okay? Some is gonna go on the face, looks horrible now, right? What's one thing we just learned a second ago is we could always make things better by honestly turning it to overlay, which is the story of my life, right? Now we have that like splash of gold that hopefully kind of comes from that, um, from that uh, good old, that sun there, right? So that's all I'm doing. Let's just make it golden. Getting bathed in gold light, right? Like a splash here and here. And since that person's face is up, we'll do that, okay? I'm gonna take this to the next level in a second as well. And uh, just to remind you of the schedule, big thank you to Jesus Ramirez doing his custom po postures. Postures? I want to read posters there, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Jason should be up next uh, doing some magical scoring to picture in Adobe Audition. I'm always like, man, I need to, I need to watch that. All right, so. Uh, could you use lighting effects 
and add that yellow color to the light. Yes, you can. That's also a good study, by the way. I wanted to get into uh, dimension just as a study of light. Uh, the light is, ooh, Carol, boom, Carol, good call. Let's see, Carol is correct. So we haven't gotten to that point, but you are correct. The, the uh, light's hitting. Here's a, you win, you win the prize for the day, okay? You're exactly right. What do we do in that case? We gotta flip them. So we'll just do that real fast. We'll select this layer, we'll scroll down. We'll hold down the command key, we'll click. We'll do command T. Anytime you do a command T, you have all of these um, options for adjusting. Uh, flipping and distorting is all right in here. So that's what I do. It beats going clear up here and clear down here and then clear over here, right? Instead of doing that, I do command T. I right click, flip horizontal and uh, hopefully you're happy. Are you happy now? I hope so. I know I am. Cool, we have that. Another issue this has that some of you might see, um, five, $5, you got it. $5, please. Going into the curves, I wanna make these even darker. Okay, so these are the sculptures, the statues, right? I could really crank this down even more uh, or I can add another one as well if I wanted to get it really extreme. But what's happening is it's making um, the side that uh, this side actually um, shouldn't be darker because the sun's hitting it. So these sides should also not only be yellow, but brighter, right? So we go to the curves layer, we'll hit B for brush. We'll make sure we're painting with black and then we can add those highlights in there as well. So I'm just, you can see, I'm just adding to that layer mask right here. So I'm like saying, hey, curves affect everything except for uh, like this, the right side of some of these pieces, right? And it just, it's gonna make it look better. You could tell already. They kind of look like they're turning gold and not like getting a splash of light, right? So that's what they look like. So that's what I'm doing there. Make it a little brighter down here. You get the idea. Let's paint some more. This is kind of cool. This whole thing, um, what would be the name of this masterpiece? I don't know. So basically this is all about kind of like chaos is what the initial statue was like, or excuse me, not chaos, agony. Um, uh, so yeah, it doesn't have a name yet. What it does, it's having currently an issue with the composition. The composition is struggling right now, just so you know. Um, that's all. The composition kind of needs, has an issue because there's like gaps and things like that. Because I really haven't positioned any of those plan planets. So maybe I need to work on that right now. Okay, so let me do that really fast. This is where I uh, kind of, I've screwed up, to be honest with you, not too bad. But the thing is, is I have actually um, painted, right? I've already painted on this layer. I've painted on all three of these characters, right? And really, I want to keep everything in such a way to where I can move them around, okay? So yes, lo and behold, statues of the gods rain down from the heavens or something. All right, so I'm gonna fix this really fast. Bear with me. Anyways, I'm just trying to put this together in such a way to where I can move him around now. Now, now the the lights um, are attached to the statues, is what I'm going for. All right, let's move this leg. I'm gonna do this very fast. X, V, bam, select all, invert, delete, delete. Bring this in here, clip it to this guy, or something like that. 
Take it back out. Let's do that. There we go. There we go. Easy, steady. Where's the leg? There's the leg. There we go. Clip it. There we have it. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that like. go okay got it done let's move this leg up sorry I feel like I need to work on this composition before I continue any further um, especially with some of these but that is okay all right Wait for it. Sorry if I'm not looking at chat. And we're back. There we are. Cool. Now we can move all these around with a little bit more efficiency, right? Because I kind of want to crowd everything in a little bit more. All right. Uh, the Saturn and statue are together yeah so like some of these issues these maybe these actually all need to kind of be in respective places i actually initially brought these in not actually knowing if i was actually going to use them just so you know um like this is a this is a situation because like if we have the earth down here you know what's it doing floating out here right so let's just get rid of the earth no offense earth i think you're great Earth, you're great. Also what we learned, command, shift, open bracket, open bracket. I just brought this to the very bottom because I want Jupiter to be behind parts. Command L, make it darker, but not too dark. Yeah, that's, that is a start. Okay. All right. Let me show you something. You ready for this? This is, oh, Mallory, you're being too kind. This is a huge situation. This is, this is like compositing, the most important compositing tip that I can give you. Because right now I have this, and let's even take that off or whatever. What I initially tried was I, I was like, oh, that's darker. I, you know, I need it in the background, so I'm going to make it darker. Right, look at these blacks. We know now, as we look at this, that this is way more black than it. It's too much black, right? It's way too much black. We know that because what we can always do is you can always add a, uh, you can always remove the color of your entire piece, and then you start to see the issues that have, the, the parts that have issues. So right in here, we can now see, oh, this planet is sticking out too much. So what this shows me when you turn things black and white, eliminates all the color, it says, hey, you know what? Right down here, oh, this one's too dark. These other planets are just too bright. You know, so there's a whole bunch of color correction that still needs to happen, okay? I'll show you how I make this look the same. This is how I match blacks and I absolutely love this. And uh, I hope you will too, huh? And gosh, 30 minutes have gone by. I got to, I got work to do. We want this planet to match. Uh, really, we want to put it in the sky, okay? So um, we'll just get rid of that le the levels there. We can try to use good old curves again. Here's curves. Let's just clip it to that layer. Let's click on the curves itself, okay? So I'm clicked right here. And uh, now right up here, instead of just like willy-nilly just trying to lock it in, uh, go up here and just hold down the option key and click. If you option key and click on this auto button, you then get to define your own dark and light colors. So this is where I go in. I'm like, hey, find those 
dark and light colors, like define them. And that's where I'll define the shadows should be the darkest point in the sky, right? So you can see already when I click there, we're dealing with this sort of situation right in here. These are the darks. And again, I can kind of click around. We can all kind of see that it's kind of in that area like so, but that makes sure the blacks match so it actually fits that scene better, okay? Another thing I could do is I can go into the highlights, right? Click right there and we can sort of take the highlights of this whole thing, right? And this might be a little bit more tricky and notice you can always kind of jump in and tweak this yourself, but that's what I'll usually do is use auto correction options, okay? Uh, now it looks better, good, good. Uh, all right, so check this out. Are you ready for this? Uh, 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 by the way, Mallory, I am just on one layer right over here. Oops, I just scrolled away from it. Let's zoom in. I am just, I just added the curves to Jupiter, right? So the curves are only affecting this layer. But that being said, all of them need those same adjustments, right? So what I could do is when I hit OK, it'll say, hey, do you want to save these colors? And I could say yes. So if I want to apply it to the other planets, I can. But what I might want to do with all these planets, where are our lovely planets anyways? Honestly, all these planets need to be in the background. So I could do one of these jobs. Put Jupiter in the folder, right? And then use curves on that whole folder with all the planets to make them all look like they're more sort of in space and, and uh, just kind of matches it up more. Of course the Earth, or excuse me, the Sun doesn't need to be in there, so let's pull that out. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. I could tweak that all day long. Uh, let's get back in here. Here we have this one. I could add some more light to this. I could start to play with lens flares if I want to, right? So let's just make everything black. This is an oldie, but always a goodie. Render right down here. Somebody mentioned lighting effects. We can work with lighting effects. Actually, let's try lighting effects since it was mentioned. Here's, wait for it. Oh, ah, cancel. This is this is the difference between lens flares and lighting effects. I need a layer that has gray. There we are. Once I have that layer with gray, then that's when I want to do the lovely lighting effects. Bam. Now we see we have this spotlight, right, that I can potentially use, right? I like the, uh, well, maybe it is the spotlight. There's also a point light. We can see those settings, and then we have in infinite light, which again, I've never used. But here, let's go to the spotlight that we have. We can kind of drop that in. We can take the edges and increase the size, uh, scaling it. And don't forget, you could add color to this as well. So colorize, let's jump in, let's add our lovely gold tone, something like that. Doesn't do that much, does it? Why did this not... Didn't really add that much color to it. Oh, oh brother. There we go, we'll just do that. That's done, okay, okay. You get the idea, that's how lighting works. We could just use this, of course this doesn't really match our whole scene, uh, but what we can do is we can go ahead and map this to like potentially the sculpture, right? So right over here, we can go ahead and clipping mask, bam, like that. And then we can change this, as you can see, as we go down, maybe it just affects the darks, maybe it affects, affects the lights, maybe it affects both as I get into this second segment right in here, okay? Overlay, you get the idea. I kind of like the darks, by the way. Anyways, just uh, just kind of going through this, seeing what works and what doesn't. All right, it's getting pretty extreme. What's the thing we learned a second ago? Is that like if we're changing it to any of these, we need to make sure the uh, 
the Blacks um, lineup and all that stuff, right? But yeah, we just do, we'll just go with overlay. And again, we're just showing you lighting just for fun. And now we have that and we can kind of move that around and make it change it. Okay, that wasn't even what I wanted to talk about. It's all about adding a layer and rendering out a lens flare. You know, throwing that in there somewhere, clicking OK, changing this. Yeah, you guessed it. Right down here, just keep the lights, right? We're like, remove all the blacks. So that means it's going to be the second section down in here. This will only affect or only leave the, the lights in this case. But here we have, of course, going through all these and figuring out which, one, which ones we like. It's all personal preference. There we go. Right, we can do something like that and then just erase a little bit because I think this is a little intense. All right, we'll do something like that. That kind of ties it in a little bit more. Uh, okay, we got that. That's looking pretty good. We can, this is just one version, by the way. This is just one version we were working on. This needs to be cropped. We need to work on the light. We need to work on, I really need to work on the, the placement of everything. Uh, but I want to play with more color because I only have 15 minutes. Okay, so let's just save this. Oh, you like color dodge? We could do color dodge. Hey guys, tell me your favorite, what is your favorite blend mode or usually your go-to blend mode? Uh, would love to hear. Oh, I did include, of course, Pluto. Uh, yeah, say you'll, you'll, you forget about lighting, you know, painting and uh, using that on another layer and blurring it. Yeah. So many things we could do. Okay, so. This is one version. Done. Let's do a save as. Second version. And let's knock this out. We're gonna go do an entirely different look to this. Ah, uh, Cody Bear's overlay. Uh, overlay, multiplier overlay, screen, yes. Overlay's handy. Soft light, I do overlay and then soft light is just kind of knocks it down a little bit. Um, oh, darken or multiply. I've been using like color burn too, uh, more recently. <sighs> Divide, wow. Fascinating. Okay, so this is my new version. So now I'm gonna go nuts. I'm gonna go nuts. So let's just delete all of our hard work that we did. We already have that previous one anyway. Let's get rid of it. Let's do that. Right, well, let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of this photo filter. Oh, maybe both of these layers. Let's be prepared at a moment's notice to just uh, discard the things that we don't need. Let's do that. All right. There we go. We are back to where we were. Let's have some fun with some of the more lighting right in here. Uh, changing this to something like, like radial. This definitely needs some more adjustments with the uh, characters as well. Right, let's just bring these together like that. My bad, I was started moving things around and I did not have all the layers selected. You're fine, kid. What about this kid? Come on, kid. That should all be connected. There you go, buddy. You better. Let's move those in like that. This is a perfect example of why I'd have auto select set to group. Cause I keep on accidentally digging in and um, let's flip my screen and um, there we go. Uh, accidentally moving individual layers when I don't need to. So now what I can do is when I hold down, when I do this auto select, uh, oh, it, it still does that whole one as well, but anyways, let's move on. Let's move this up. Let's dive into this. Let's get rid of that. 
let's do some of my favorite color schemes. Okay, you ready for this? It's my favorite. We could throw some curves on it, potentially. I want to have some light sources. You ready for this? Let's do this. Let's kind of flip this to radial, right? And by the way, since I want to go through lots of radials, radial gradients, I can come in here and say, hey, you know what? Every time I apply a gradient, make it a radial gradient. Because that's what I want to do at this point. It's like, just give me these bursts from the center, right? And I think this shape, if there is a shape in the background, it's really going to help unify this piece. But now as I select each one of these, you can see what it does. It does the obvious, right? Okay, we'll still have this kind of dark. And uh, let's add some light to it. This definitely, when you have things floating around, uh, again, it's always a good idea to just like have some sort of element in here that is your stabilizing element. So that's why I would like have a, a circle, right? Some sort of orb or something, right? And this just kind of sort of like unifies it so everything doesn't feel as chaotic and, and floating around and everything, right? So that's one thing we can try, right? We can even throw a little gradient on top of that. Another thing we'll work with as I take the opacity down, because again, I just want that to be like pretty light. It could also be gray, right? Let's go ahead and drop in some more elements for lighting and all that good stuff. Let's make a circle. There we are again. Electric with outer glow. Of course, a lot of times. So I've just added an outer glow to this, as you can see. Um, but I actually want it to be not only larger, but I want to add a couple of them. Because anytime you do a glow, you want to have it brighter and more intense the closer it is to the center. But there are no more outer glows that you can add because there's no plus sign right here. But what we can do is you can always add a drop shadow. Add the drop shadow, what we're doing here is we'll change the drop shadow, right, to actually be, um, act like more of a, let's take that back, like an outer glow. So that's all I'm doing right there. Give me a little highlight. Let's add another drop shadow just because we can, right? We'll change this one to white. And we'll just have that one on one side because I think it'll just look cool. <laughs> right, there we go. Something like that is all I'm uh, working with. Uh, obviously have the inner shadow on the other side. And uh, just give me a chance to play with this a little bit. If you don't mind. All right, yeah, let's do something like that. Again, I'm just defining the source of light. Putting it in the background. All right, I'm looking up at chat now. Uh, yeah, oh, I hear you, Laura Mipsum, if that is your real name. Oh, I do that too many times, right? I definitely do that. Just, I don't, sometimes you just don't know the name of some, some things, even though you use them all the time, you just know where they are. Yeah. I hear ya. Let's go for teal. There we go. There we go. We got it. I'm going to get a little more complex with a couple light sources. And yes, looks like a little eclipse. That's right. This stuff takes time. You ever notice that? You never notice, you ever notice how the things that are worth doing seem to take some time, <laughs> right? But I love this idea of having like different light sources that are going to splash onto these uh, statues. So from here, I'm gonna actually jump into hue and saturation like that. Take that saturation down. Ah, oh, looks so much better. Let's play with the curves some more. I just love it when it's like those curves are really dark. Like, ah, oh, get it down there. Down, down, right? Like. 
super dark like that. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's throw some color on it. B for brush, right? I can paint on this, right? We've been playing with uh, blend modes. I can add that as a clipping mask and go into some of your favorite blend modes that you've asked. Multiply and soft light. Here's multiply. This is what the multiply looks like, which looks really cool. Uh, so there's soft light. Soft light actually gives it more pop. So let's go with that. Cool. Let's add another layer. It's gonna be a clipping mask. B for brush. Change it to this hot pink, like so. And we can add it to this other side, right? And we still want some splashes of like parts going here, or there, like that, right? Just all of it kind of bouncing off these different parts. And Marsha uses overlay, multiply, and light. And let's go to overlay. Again, this is for the pink. Let's go to multiply. And now let's go to lighten. Interesting, kind of into lighten. We're gonna go with lighten, right? Almost makes it look a little bit too bright is my only concern. Um, but again, I can kind of paint this any way I want and get that splash of color the way I want it to look, right? Cool. Uh, so we need some more fun elements because really there's only three things here. It just needs to have some more chaos to it as well. So that's where I would see what I have. And I forgot who was saying the com uh, talking about how their brushes, they lost their brushes. I certainly hope I have, oh, I do. We can throw some spatter brushes in here. What I actually need are, um, ooh, crazy cracks. I need stars. That's what I need. I need stars. I got some hair brushes, branches, wispy. Where did these all come from, you might ask? Well, just go right here. Oh, what is, if there was only place that's, I don't know, maybe you can get more brushes right there. Boom. And these are the concept brushes available out there, just so you know. Uh, that's where I got them. Here's the summer brushes, and they're the concept ones. Okay. I would say you can go to Brush Easy as well, right? Looks like I did Sparks. Where are my Spark brushes? Let's take a look. Lens flares. Ooh, I got some fun lens flares I can add to this. Let's try that. Again, these are li these are actually huge, to be honest with you. Let's take them all down like that. Okay, we want them to be like little. And let's try with white initially, and we can jump in and just add some quick, like, dots. Right, that's all I'm doing. Um, there we go. Let's take this down, too. I really need to be able to lock the size of these. I don't know why there isn't a lock size feature in here. Look at that, bam, bam. Lens flares, lens flares. Uh, cool. I, you wish there was a search for the brush library. Yes. I couldn't agree more. I would love to be able to search for a brush and if it's not in my current library, it actually has just like we do with fonts, right? I would love to see that. Because with fonts, if you do like a search for a certain font or need to find one that you don't have out there, you can it'll download from Adobe Fonts. We need the same thing for brushes. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of what I have so far. Let's uh, play, we can play with some different backgrounds, right, as well. As I add this one and I lose the, my mouse loses connection. Come on, bring it back. Help me out. Why? Why now, mouse? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, mouse. You ever have a mouse just straight up die on you? Because that's basically what's happened. All right. It's okay. I'll fix it in a sec. Back on. And if you're new joining us, let me know. Uh, ooh, Dominican Republic's in the house. Guillermo, what's up? 
and Shabir. All right, so yeah, that didn't work. Always be prepared, as they say. Let's just go ahead and disregard the, the signal, and we are back. So, all right. Sorry, the resolution is a little small, but let's kind of let's take a look at this. Uh, sweet. New layer, B for brush. I could add some more of the sparkles, but what I want to do is I want to reset it and add just some nice... Wait for it. There we are. Make it really large. Brush. Bigger. I just need some color cast, like change the color of it over there is what I want to do. And I didn't even get to the other piece, which I'm going to work on. Oh, Josh, I don't have time. I do not have time. I always start something new before it's time to go. So just stay tuned for where this one ends up. Feel free to, uh, you know, follow me on all the social medias as, uh, as I figure out where this ends up. And you'll actually be able to see... Uh, this version that I worked on and just to show you where I'd take things to the next level is like using gradient maps for instance So here's this one using gradient maps Okay as an option the black and white version and uh, One with just a photo filter so again just kind of going through these different color options Sorry, I didn't quite get to that you never have enough time, but also you're not expecting your mouse to fail but those are those two. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Jason's up next. Thanks, everybody. Bye.